So check this out. I don't know if you know this one. I told you I had a story to tell you. Um, so a few weeks before WrestleMania, maybe three or four weeks, I get a call from Vince. And he's talking about Shane and his appendix, and, or not his appendix, his uh, diverticulitis. And he had an infection in his hand. And he had, there was one other thing as well. Staph. Staph infection. Yep. Uh, something had gone a wrong. Hernia. Hernia. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> and he goes, listen, like, we don't know if he can do mania. And he had somehow looked or got someone to look at what my schedule was. And we had a Fozzie show that day. And originally, I was like, well, why are we competing against WrestleMania? Why don't we just combine it? We'll do an earlier show, then let the venue buy WrestleMania, and I'll watch WrestleMania with all the fans. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I know you're doing a Fozzie show, and then I know you got, uh, you're got you going to watch WrestleMania with your fans. He goes, what would you think about coming to New Orleans if Shane can't do it? Do you know anything about this? Yeah. So, okay. I mean, so I don't – it was just – it's weird because we're in this stage now where they don't tell the boys anything. anything. Right? So, right. like, they keep all the secrets from the boys right. because they're afraid that the boys are all talking to the dirt sheets <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like – and so I asked. I said – when because Shane called me and told me. He said, I'm in the hospital right now. I've got diverticulitis while I was in Antigua. Yeah. And then when they were giving me IVs, I got a staph infection from the IVs. And then I have this hernia that's right. like coming out of my stomach. And I'm just like, it's like, but don't worry, I'll be ready for mania. I was like, <laughs> what? How? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. That's what I and said. So like the next, so I was on my way to TV. So I was actually going through security when he was, he texted me and said, call me. And then all that happened. And then, so then I talked to him and he said that. So I, when I got the TV the next day, I was like, what are we going to do? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly he can't be wrestling. <laughs> and they said, well, he says he's wrestling, but we have a backup. And we think it's a pretty good backup. Yeah. But I said, who is it? And they're like, we can't tell you. Ah. Uh, we can't, You can't tell me? <laughs> like, I'm in the match. match right? <laughs> yeah. all right, all right. Shouldn't I know? So, so you're just finding out now. No, I mean, okay. I, I, I had assumed. Gotcha. I had kind of assumed that it like you were the person who makes the most sense right, with your right, history right. with Kevin and all that kind of stuff. And it's so. funny though, because it's like we were looking like we were Googling an airport because there's in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, like the most out of the way place. So we were looking up like airports close to Hampton Beach and how long is the charter to get there? He's like, okay, you can make it right on time and we'll, we'll, we'll give you a police escort and you'll basically have to get there and go right into the ring. I said, listen, I got no problem with that. And I know that, that Brian has no problem with it. Kevin and Sammy, especially Sammy, <laughs> are going to have heart attacks <laughs> calling a WrestleMania match in the ring. I mean, right. obviously, we would have think of some stuff before him. But right. like, I can do it. I don't right. have a problem. So yeah. can you. Yeah. We can do it now. Right. But I was like, Sammy is going to die of a, of a freaking <laughs> aneurysm if we do that. So anyways, that was uh, the other. And then the same as you. And they finally, uh, next week, Vince like, I think Shane's going to do it. I'm like, how? How is he getting cleared? Yeah. With like, you know, how, is that even like? How well, do you do that? That was one of the things I was thinking. And, you know, just, just Shane is just, he's fearless, of right? Of course. He's one of us. Like, yeah. We do the same, well, right? And, well, and it's weird because he had that helicopter crash, right? right? So he was in that helicopter crash. And the pilot was more shaken up than Shane was. And Shane was just like, okay. Yeah. He was keeping the pilot calm. And it's like, it's like one of those things where it's just like, what? Like, yeah, exactly. you're going down in a helicopter. Yeah. How do you not like... He's a McMahon. He's not yeah. going out that way. <laughs> but yeah, when, when I heard he's going to do it, I'm like, well, A, that's crazy. B, of course he can. I just yeah. didn't know like, how they could get a doctor right. to clear him. But, you know, I guess when your uh, dad owns the company, there's ways to make it work. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about your journey, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's been such a crazy story back and forth about how you're able to come back. Now, you you never really gave up hope. Like, you always said, I'm coming back. So I didn't always. Okay. So my last match was in 2015, and then they sent me to these neurologists, and all these neurologists had cleared me. And these were – none of these people were my doctors. They were doctors WWE would send me right. to. But then – uh, Dr. Maroon, he would just look like, because I kept a lot of things from him. And that's mm -hmm. the thing is that like, okay, your doctors need to be able to trust you. And they didn't trust me because I had lied to them. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> what like, kind of issues were you, were you feeling? So, I mean, I didn't have any, so I didn't have any issues. Mm -hmm. So the issue, the things were lying about past stuff. So oh. I had four post concussion seizures, which wow. that, that's the big that's the big one. That's the big one where it was like, and Brie, so Brie was there for one of them. And so she said, uh, after we'd gotten married, she said, the next concussion you have, 
you have to tell somebody about it because, and it, it ha- by that point it hadn't happened in years. But she said you have to ask him because she's concerned. I'm concerned too. We wanted to have we wanted to have a baby, so uh, so the WWE sends me to uh, the doctor in Phoenix, and so we tell him about the seizures. And I don't know why I was this naive in the sense of like I thought okay I would tell him. And I just didn't think it would get back to the office, right? <laughs> but then I, but I also thought I did think that when I told when I told them about it, I thought my career would, would be kind of done. Mm-hmm. I was like, the, if they find out about this, they're not. Right. Be, but he said it's actually because of the type of seizures that you have. It's like he actually cleared me. He said mm-hmm. your brain functions so well, and these were isolated incidents with a particular set of circumstances, and so. So he had cleared me, but then, you know, imagine you're Dr. Maroon, you're the head of WWE Medical, and you've done it, and then all of a sudden you get this report from about one of the talents talking about seizures, post concussion seizures, and then, you know, it's hard to regain trust after that. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, so then it's been like I wasn't having any issues. I felt great, and I think that was one of the problems. And then in February of 2016, I had taken. So because I was trying, I was going and doing all this weird stuff, trying to get cleared, right? So it's like, like what? so uh, I would, so I had heard about this certain type of testing that isn't necessarily used for diagnosis, but it's like that was used in MMA athletes and stuff like that. And so I was going and doing that and all these different types of stuff. And so, but I had been cleared by Dr. Cardenas, who was at Barrows Neurological, who's one of the best in the country. I'd been cleared by UCLA at that point. Uh, a team of doctors at UCLA, but uh, they still wouldn't clear me in for valid reasons because more so because I think of the trust thing and just if something happens, people are going to say, how did you clear this guy with this, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, so I was going and do it like, like oh, okay, well, I heard of this, this thing out in New York State. And so they hooked my brain up to all this EEG stuff and then had me do reflex testing. Well, what it showed is that my reflexes are a little slow in the temporal parietal region of my brain. But when you read the report, what it says is it says, slowing in the temporal parietal region of the brain seems to indicate a uh, small acute lesion or subacute lesion in the temporal parietal region of the brain. I'm like, mm. I have a lesion in my brain? <laughs> and it's like, you know, and, and I, at this point, I was trying to be very forthcoming and honest with everybody about everything that I was doing because mm-hmm. that was one of the, the setbacks. You had to right. Know. And so when I got that report, I was like, oh. And Vincent a- asked me, he said, when you get this report back, let me know because he was kind of starting to almost be on my side a little bit. Like all these doctors had cleared me. And so, well, let me know what the New York doctors say. And then, you know, yeah, yeah. So I called him and I told him. And he's like, well, it's good that we know now. And then, like, two days later, he called me and said, hey, I want you to retire in Seattle. <laughs> and so it's like, wow. Yeah. And then so so that was two days later. He said he called and told me he'd like me to retire in Seattle, which was two days from the day that he called Jeez. me. And so but at that point, I was like, if I do have what what most people when you think of a lesion, you think of like a cut. Mm-hmm. And so if I have a cut on my brain, I like I always thought I don't want to wrestle if it's bad for me like if, if i shouldn't be wrestling yeah i i don't want to wrestle I'm not tough through it or yeah. Whatever. yeah and so um so that made all the sense in the world to me and then i retired and it got like a bunch of i mean well, let's talk about that night though because i remember i was there in seattle when you yeah. did that speech it's one of the i mean greatest in a sad way moments in raw history was that just all completely from the heart did you actually have someone write stuff for you did you write no, it all yourself? so i wrote it all myself but i didn't necessarily write it i was I was trying to formulate what I wanted to say because how I felt was not how I wanted to present myself. If if that was going to be my last, if that was my last time Hurrah, talking whatever, about yeah. it, yeah, I don't want I don't want to talk about my how I really felt was devastated. Yeah, and I didn't want to make it about being devastated. I wanted to think about. I wanted to present it as because it, if my career had ended then. The way I thought it was, where it was like, maybe I shouldn't wrestle anymore. I'm very grateful for 
the career that I had. Like 16 years being able to do this, like wrestling all over the world. And like, it's it's a cool job. Like I haven't had to have a real job <laughs> since I worked at a video store slash tanning salon <laughs> in like 2001. <laughs> like kids today don't even know what video stores right, are, right? right? You know, like, and it's just a, just a small town video store with a tanning salon in it, which just seems like a absurd concept and it's like that was my last real job and be, besides that all I've done is this really fun thing that we get to do and go around the world yeah. and so it's just like getting to meet awesome people and doing cool stuff and so I that's that's how I wanted to present it and I tried to make myself feel that and a lot of times I did but there were also times where it's just like devastating mm -hmm. and and I tried to push that part of my my mindset back and focus on the gratitude part right. so so yeah so that's why in the in the when i talked about it i had to keep saying gratitude to focus to remember, myself right to to remind myself of of how lucky i am so yeah so, so that was kind of that